I'm Pete White. I'm sure you are aware that we have filed all of the necessary information with the Securities and Exchange Commission regarding our proposed acquisition of the Columbus and Southern Ohio Electric Company. We certainly hope that the SEC will reach a final decision on this matter by the end of this year. But regardless of the outcome or the date of that decision, we will shift a number of service corporation operations to Columbus over the next two or three years, beginning in 1980. Certain functions, primarily in the engineering departments, will remain in New York for the foreseeable future. Locating our offices in Columbus will position us near the geographic center of the AEP system. This will enable us to strengthen our relationship with our seven operating companies and to better serve the more than two million customers in our service area. We've produced this film about Columbus as one step in what we expect to be a continuing flow of information to our employees. The film will acquaint you with the area's cultural and recreational features, transportation, housing, education, facilities and services that are available in the community. Living in Columbus is an enjoyable experience for many reasons. Among them is the wide range of cultural activities. The Columbus Symphony Orchestra plays four subscription and two opera series, featuring such guest performers as Beverly Sills, Van Clyburn, Marvin Hamlish, and Count Basie. Theater and drama are popular here, and Columbus audiences enjoy touring Broadway shows, summer theater series, and a variety of productions at repertory theaters and dinner playhouses. Many special attractions are presented from the grand stage of the ornate Ohio Theater, a national landmark. Columbus is also a cinema center with more than 50 first-run movie houses. Pop, jazz, and rock concerts are held in college and civic auditoriums and night spots throughout the city. The Ballet Metropolitan and other dance groups offer a mixture of both classical and modern dance. The Columbus Art Museum contains works by Picasso, Monet, Cezanne, and famous Columbus native George Bellows. At the center of science and industry, children can experience America's progress from western towns to space exploration and the latest technology. At the wondrous Ohio Historical Society and Ohio Village, you don't just imagine the past, you walk through it. And you'll enjoy getting involved at the Cultural Arts Center, a restored city armory which offers low-cost classes in all arts and crafts, as well as summer concerts. The Columbus Zoo has often made history. The polar bear, Zero, gave birth to Sub-Zero in 1978, one of the few cubs successfully born and raised in any zoo. There's Colo, the first gorilla ever born in captivity. A new carnivore herbivore complex which displays wild animals in their native habitat. A petting zoo. And George, the bald eagle, who made news in 1978 as father to Calusa, a female eaglet, another Columbus major event. And I think when you come to the Columbus area, you're going to see that Ohio State University football far exceeds uh, your expectations. Columbus loves sports. College football, hockey, gymnastics, track and field, basketball, and a variety of other contests draw thousands of cheering supporters. Professionally speaking, Columbus is host to the Magic, an international soccer team, the Clippers, the Yankee AAA Farm Club, the Metros, champions of the Midwest Football League. The superstars of golf at the Jack Nicklaus Muirfield Memorial Tournament. And harness and thoroughbred racing at two major tracks. Feel more active? Join in the city's annual 10,000 meter run. Strike up a bowling league with friends. Shoots down the hills at one of several skiing areas within an hour of Columbus or enjoy your favorite recreational pastime in one of the metropolitan area's 26 parks. Columbus has more than 10,000 acres of recreational facilities for boating, fishing, 
biking, tennis, golf, nature trails, picnicking, and swimming. Finding the right house is a serious matter. For information on housing, Myrna Cobry, president of the Columbus Board of Realtors. All prices mentioned are in 1979 dollars. Traditionally, Columbus has been a very warm and welcoming city for the newcomers. And today, the great majority of our community, believe it or not, are non-natives. And you're looking at one right now. I've been in Columbus, Ohio for 15 years, and I moved here from New York City not knowing one single soul. And today, I feel like I own this city. Uh, our housing market, we have all ages and all price ranges that are available. And the average sale price in 1978 in Columbus was $44,300. The commuting time from any suburb in Columbus, Ohio to downtown uh, is no more than 30 minutes. Now in Columbus, property taxes would run like this. For a $50,000 home, you'd be paying $600 per year. For a home priced at $60,000, you'd be paying $700 per year. Adjacent to downtown are two areas that have undergone redevelopment by residents on a private basis and have a strong community spirit. There's German Village on the south side of downtown and Victorian Village on the north side of downtown. And most buyers for this area are between the 25 and 45 age group. We have an area called Grandview. Grandview is a near northwest suburb of about 10,000 people. There's 10 minutes or less to downtown with good neighborhood shopping facilities. Most homes in Grandview are between 25 and 50 years old. There's a good selection of homes between the prices of 40,000 and 60,000. Then there is an area called Arlington. Arlington is a northwest suburb of approximately 38,000 people. It's five miles from downtown and there are only a few homes there that would be priced under $50,000. The average sale price in Arlington would run between $70,000 and $90,000. Arlington is home to many business executives, university professors, doctors, lawyers, Woody Hayes, and Jack Nicholas. We have an area called Westerville. Westerville is one of the fastest growing communities that has a definite mixture of professional and technical professions. It's located 15 miles northeast of downtown. Westerville has grown from 10,000 people in 1970 to nearly 30,000 today. There's a large selection of homes in all ranges between $40,000 and $80,000. We have another area called Worthington. Worthington is one of the oldest communities in central Ohio. It's located about seven miles north of downtown Columbus. Worthington has retained many of its village characteristics. It's very similar to a New England town in appearance, and it also may remind you very much of Larchmont in New York. It has a blend of fine older homes and newer subdivisions, and it offers many choices in prices ranging from $45,000 to $75,000 and then up. And then we have our apartments. Compared to the New York area, apartment living in Columbus offers fewer restrictions, more amenities, and the opportunity for community social functions. Apartments are available in either large complexes or smaller building units. Your apartment rentals would run anywhere in the range of $175 to $225 for a one-bedroom apartment. A two-bedroom apartment will run you $225 to $300 a month. I thought, I am going to play this safe. We are going to get a room here, so what we're going to do because we, I just did not want to commit myself. And uh, I got a room and I uh, rented it uh, week by week, in fact, you see. I wanted to hang real loose so I could get out if it was necessary. But uh, the more, the longer I stayed here, the more I realized, oh, you know, this is not a bad place at all. Due to Columbus' excellent freeways and feeder roads, many people choose to live in nearby towns and villages, such as Canal Winchester, Pickerington, or Grove City. These areas offer the advantages of smaller communities, yet the average commute time to downtown Columbus is less than 45 minutes. A 
I'm Harold England, pastor of First Community Church here in Columbus. I'm speaking to you on behalf of the Metropolitan Area Church Board. Four years ago, my wife Enid and I were probably asking the same questions about Columbus that you're asking now. What kind of a place is it? What are the people like? What are the churches like? I'd like to tell you what we found. Columbus churches are warm, they're strong, they're vital. Our 870,000 people here in Columbus worship in 869 churches. That's one per thousand. We have 58 denominations covering the whole spectrum of theologies and worship styles. We have a vital Jewish community with synagogues from all three branches of Judaism. We also have churches of national origin, Hungarian, Chinese, Vietnamese, Spanish, Greek, and there's an Islamic center for Ohio's 6,000 Muslims. You never knew we were that cosmopolitan. Neither did I. The churches of Columbus are ready to give you a warm welcome. We'll look for you when you come. Getting around the community can be a challenge as gasoline prices increase. Columbus is fortunate to have a public transit system which is both efficient and convenient. The Central Ohio Transit Authority, or COTA for short. Kota buses travel more than 8 million miles a year to serve the metropolitan area. Kota's network of 55 local and express routes includes not only Columbus itself, but all suburban communities and several outlying towns and villages as well. Here you have no traffic conditions at all. Although I will say the natives think they have a traffic condition, but they have never been to New York. <laughs> well, there's no comparison. I can go out and I get in my car and I... Uh drive down and uh, drive into our particular garage here at Nationwide and where the aggravation of uh, riding a train from Reading to Boston and then a subway from the North Station to where I worked with the... In fact, for years, I never carried a wallet. I just carried something that if I dropped dead, they'd know who I was. And I always had enough money in my pocket that would allow me to put the quarter in the slot. And of course, I had tickets for the train just from the standpoint of the everything was crowded and you never, you never could tell, so uh, I don't miss that at all. The mode of transportation, which normally is by car, that might be just a little different than what someone would be used to if they were in the New York area, New Jersey area. Public transportation is a little better, but uh, we don't have the numbers of automobiles nor the numbers of people in this area. and. There is not a problem, as I see it, with getting to any of the shopping areas, the malls, or what have you. Columbus would have everything that you would find in any major metropolitan city. We have, uh, well, for example, Lazarus, which is a division of Federated Department Stores. Uh, you can go into Lazarus and you can find anything you want. You can find, uh, if you're from New York City, Bloomingdale's. You can find Filene's from Boston. You can find High Fashion of I Magnon from uh, California. Thing. Then there's the Union, which is another very nice store. But, you know, shopping is, uh, I think, very good. In fact, we like it much better than Boston because we can now go out on Sundays and go to the store. And and you can walk into any food market, and the, the uh, shelves are always stocked, and uh, we have delicious uh, fresh vegetables and fruits all year round. And uh, I guess one of my problems was getting a good tomato in New York City. And this is the heartland of the tomato. Reynoldsburg, out in the area where I live, is the originator of the tomato. And we just have the most delicious tomatoes. As a matter of fact, I spend most of my time in the springtime when I go back to New York bringing tomatoes back for everyone. When I first moved here, I was very apprehensive about um, leaving my friends. You know, I thought, I'll never be able to make friends in this city. But that is not at all the case. I shouldn't have worried about that at all. People here are very friendly. 